In today's video, we're going to show you our favorite tools for detailing those difficult to clean carpets. What's up everybody, my name is Phil and welcome to Miranda Detailing where we make satisfying detailing videos. So like I said, we're going to be talking about my favorite tools when it comes to detailing and cleaning those difficult to clean carpets. You know what I mean, those really low nap, cheap quality garbage carpets that if you get a ton of particulates and dog hair in, it's gonna take you a long time to be able to get that stuff out. So we worked on these two vehicles and I got some footage of two different types of carpet and kind of two different types of uh, conditions that you will find. Now granted, these aren't the worst, but the first vehicle was an Acura RDX, I believe, so a little small SUV, and uh, the carpets in there were very disappointing. In fact, they were exactly the same carpets that you would find in a Honda Civic. Um, the kind of cheap, low nap carpets that don't really have any, any nap to them at all. They're basically just interwoven fibers, really, really low nap. And when you get particles in there over an extended period of time, it's really difficult to get dog hair and particles out of those carpets. So here's how we go about it. And I'll give you some ideas, some tips and tricks as to how to deal with carpet like that, as well as dog hair. So particulates and dog hair, those are gonna be your main things that you're dealing with with these low nap, difficult to clean carpets because it's gonna drive you insane. The more you brush, the more it comes out and the more you have to vacuum. And sometimes you're just kind of working over yourself and over yourself and it's a vicious circle. So. You probably have noticed if you've watched uh, a lot of our videos, I'll actually put a playlist to our interior videos here. So we have a ton of interior detail videos and it shows you basically how we clean carpets, upholstery, leather, plastics, the dash, all of that, everything in between. And you'll see the variety of tools that we use. But here's one of my number one brushes that we use. So yeah, it, it looks pretty gross. I, I have to clean this thing, but um, basically this is my Casabella grout brush. And uh, I'll have links to all of these tools down below. So definitely check those out and you can click on them. They go right to Amazon so you can buy these products easily. So this brush right here, along with the rigid long nozzle here that has the rubber tip, which is flexible, um, this can actually grab dog hair and particles and stuff when you're going in between the seats, which is really, really nice. These two right here are basically my go-to main tools when I begin the detailing process. Uh, what I like to do is work all around the edges first of the carpets and the upholstery and the chairs and, and where the carpets are uh, in between the chairs because I like to get all the particles out of there first and then I'll hit the bulk areas after that. So these two tools right here, you see me use a lot, and I love these tools. Um, now you don't have to have the rigid nozzle, the, you know, this brand. Um, there's a bunch of other ones out there that work just as well. They may not have the flexible tip like this. There are longer ones that are really flexible, which I probably will get those uh, soon because there are some areas that even this has a problem getting into and basically I just use the brush along with the air compressor, which this nozzle here, we're going to talk about in a moment, but that will get the majority of the stuff that's hard to reach. And then you can um, vacuum it up with your nozzle here, but they have other ones that are a little bit longer and a little bit more narrow to the tip here. So it's really refined. You can get into some really tight areas with these nozzles. Now you will know as detailers, these are, your best friend when it comes to interior details because there's going to be areas in the vehicle that are so difficult to get to and you need a nice long nozzle like this to get into those areas along with a long brush like this that's skinny and that can get into those tight areas. So these two are my main weapons that I use for attacking those carpets. Now you will see me also use my carpet brush here. I just have a simple one um, and my favorite nozzle for 
vacuuming up the bulk of the carpets is my little Hoover brush, which you can find these on Amazon or eBay. I'll have the links down below. Love this brush. The first time I actually found a brush that was exactly like this was at a thrift store, and uh, which, you know, go to thrift stores. You will find tools like this, uh, you know, in the, in the section that has vacuums and stuff like that, if, if that thrift store has that. Usually they do. But you'll find all sorts of nozzles and brushes and heads and all that stuff. So I found this there, and I give it a try, and I fell in love with it. And then I found that you can buy it on Amazon or eBay, uh, which is great. So this I will use for the bulk of the detailing, uh, the bulk of the carpet vacuuming, because it does have these nice stiff bristles. They're not too stiff. They're not too soft. They're just right. Um, you can use them for the carpets, and you can use them for upholstery and leather and pretty much anything else. Um, even for the difficult to clean carpets, this will work very, very well. You may just have to go over it again and again. So with those difficult to clean carpets, these are going to be your main weapons of choice. They are for me. This is what I use. And I'll talk about the drill brush in a second. But these right here um, are going to work wonders. And you may have to go over the section again and again and again to brush up all those particles until you get it to a satisfactory point. Um, I wanna just briefly talk about carpets like that. When you get into a vehicle where the carpets are just horrible and you look at it and it just, you can't even see carpet, you just see dirt and sand. Um, when you start getting into that, um, it, it'll take a while, but there's going to be a limit as to how much of that stuff you're going to be able to get out of the carpets. So you're gonna to have to kind of make a judgment call as to how far you're going to go, how much time you're gonna uh, spend on that detail and, and spend on that section of the carpet because then you get into what's called diminishing returns. If you have a certain price point, a certain amount of time that you need to get a certain job done, then you can't be spending too much time on that. You have to get it to a point and, and you will learn this uh, over a period of time, um, how far you need to go, how far you want to go, and what the customer is going to expect. I've done some pretty bad vehicles where, to me, I basically felt like, eh, this is as far as I can go. I've spent four hours on the interior alone. And to me, it looked halfway better, but the customer was extremely happy. And... I had to apologize because I'm like, oh, I didn't think I got it, you know, I got all the particles out of the carpet. And they're like, it looks amazing. No problem. Here's the money. So, you know, you get, you got to kind of um, use discretion when you are dealing with carpets like that and kind of read the customer and see, are they going to be happy with that or not? And uh, that's something that you can put in your terms and agreement also um, with really bad carpets, depending on the carpet, depending on the condition of it the age, all of that stuff, how much of it is really going to come out. And uh, you have to be realistic when it comes to that. So guys, um, enjoy some of the footage uh, that we're going to show you. And let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. And as always, subscribe, click that bell. That way you get notifications each time our videos drop each week and you don't miss stuff. And like always, if you're interested in any of these tools, then click up there. That goes to our dedicated page in our website where we have tools and products that you can click on and it leads you right to Amazon so you can purchase those products easily. And if you're interested in the apparel, the t-shirts, well, maybe not hoodies because we're getting into summer, but t-shirts and we're going to get uh, hats in there as well, like baseball caps with logos on them then click up there, that will go to the online store where you can plug in Miranda 15, get 15% off of any of the items in there.
nous demandons à quoi Que bien songer en ce moment
Now I would like to talk about the drill brush attachments that I do use, but uh, I don't use them as often as you would think. Um, and I'll explain why. So you have one here, I call this the toilet bowl one because it kind of looks like a toilet bowl cleaner. Uh, this one is great. I think this one makes the most mess, however. And that's basically one of the reasons why I don't use this too often in the vehicle. This is just personal choice. I know it depends on how many people you have working on the vehicle and your method of cleaning the interior, attacking the interior. But for me, um, I'll use this one if I can take the mats out of the vehicle. I'll primarily use it for mats, maybe sometimes in the trunk because it'll be isolated uh, in that area. So I don't use this on the main carpets in the vehicle because it flicks up a lot of particles. And our method for cleaning is kind of working from top to bottom. And I work along with my wife and we have pretty much this setup where I will start on the driver's side, she will start on the passenger, uh, passenger side in the front, and uh, we will work on the dash, the center console, and work our way down. And I've used this before when all that area was clean on the carpets in the front and it, it made a mess of the dash and the, the center console that we just cleaned. You know, the dog, it'll flick up dog hair, it'll flick up particles, it'll clean that carpet great until you go back up to the dash and other areas and you see that it made a big mess. This is just my personal opinion, my personal way of doing it is I don't use this in the vehicle because of that reason. Um, this one does a, does a lot better. This does not flick up the particles and dog hair into the air because, you know, with this brush you're going uh, horizontally and it's, it's going to flick stuff up. Here, at least, you are keeping it vertical. So it'll, it'll shoot stuff over to the side, but that's a little bit better. I still don't use it as much on the interior of the vehicle. Um, I try to control as much of the particles and stuff um, so that it doesn't really shoot anywhere, I want to be able to vacuum it up and, and suck it up um, in a controlled way. But sometimes you do need to use this on that really difficult to clean carpet that is full of particulates and hair. This does a great job of removing dog hair uh, and particles from the carpet. Excellent, excellent. Beware though, that difficult to clean carpet, that low nap carpet, can be damaged very easily. Once you start aggressively brushing it and cleaning it, you'll start to notice the fibers starting to kind of fluff up. And you gotta be really careful because you can make that carpet look worse uh, than it is. It'll look damaged instead of dirty. So you gotta be really careful with that carpet. I've seen some guys where they'll take pill eaters or even little razors and razor the carpet down and remove those fibers. And yeah, you can do that, but you really don't wanna to get to that point. Um, Tornador tools and air compressors do help a lot in removing those particles, but again, it will blow it everywhere. So I like to control my work area um, and not have particles and, and junk floating all around the vehicle and land on areas that I just cleaned. So again, it's just my methodol methodology, my way of cleaning uh, the vehicle so as to not make an excessive mess. But this on the mats outside of the vehicle, uh, we have a nice foldable table that we will bring, a uh, nice portable one, and we'll set that up. And that's like our shampooing station where we will take the mats, rubber or plastic mats, whatever, and, um, and the carpet mats, of course, and then we'll use the drill brush on them. And it does a fantastic job of cleaning them. So the kit here also comes with the little one. You can see I, I don't even use this, this little one, but um, I can see applications. I can see areas where you could use this but I just don't use too many of these brushes in the vehicle myself. Maybe every once in a while I might pull this out, um, but you know, this would work in nice little tight areas uh, as well. You probably even use this more on those rubber mats, those WeatherTech mats um, that you have to brush aggressively to get into the little pores and the little uh, wrinkles in the plastic to get all that the dirt and, and stuff out of those little um, pores. So this would work really well on that, but. I really don't use it too often, but it is in my arsenal of interior detailing tools in case I need to use it. So talking about dog hair, I've showed this before. This is my favorite dog hair removal tool. 
And of course, all of these fit right onto the rigid vacuum uh, hose nozzle easily. I know it's gross. All my tools are gross. Don't look at that. So um, this works so great because you have the nice rubberized little fins here. And once you are scooping up that dog hair at the same time, it's going to be sucking it up as well. Or you can, you know, use it to brush all the dog hair into a little ball and just pull the ball up and it'll suck it right into the vacuum. So this tool is amazing. If you guys haven't tried this one, I know you have all these other little tools out there, these little like rubber scrapers. You have the stone, which I, I will use the stone uh, still, but this, this one just makes it so much easier. Um, and again, you can buy it on Amazon. So really easy to get your hands on. Some of these come with the orange slats. Some of them come with the red ones. They don't matter. Uh, they're exactly the same. So definitely pick one of these up. And, and the nice thing about this too, this does come apart. So these little tabs right here, you can actually remove this part and clean all in there like I haven't done yet. Um, so yeah, awesome tool for removing dog hair. Now, the air nozzle, which I've talked about before, this one, this, this is the Capri. And this model right here is really nice. You have the adjustable air in the back. This one has a top part, which you can actually put one of these up here. I don't know why you would want to, but I guess you can if you want to. I don't. But the nice part is the adjustable airflow. And I like the pistol grip myself. I just think it's easy to hold. And I like that you can also adjust all these little nozzles. You can buy a separate nozzle pack that has all these little ones, you know, a little flat one, a really long one, um, all sorts of them. So that's really nice. And I really like this nozzle. It's really well built, nice rubber grip here. And like I said, the pistol grip just makes it so much easier to handle uh, with your tools and, and around the vehicle. And this is like a plastic rubberized tip. So even if you hit some stuff, it's not going to damage much, um, especially in the interior. It's really not gonna make a big deal. And I use this to dry the outside um, grill pieces and things like that. Um, when my wife's using the, the other blower, then I'll use this to kind of speed up the process. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Have a great week.